All right. <clears throat> Just a few minutes after 420 here on the West Coast. That means it's time for the candle. The Molehill 420 candle with Old Man Todd. Let's take a look at cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin price, and a little bit of news. And, uh, of course, this is all for entertainment. I'm nowhere near a financial advisor, but I like to look at crypto, and I just record myself doing it. All right. And then what are we smoking today? What do we got? What do we got? Vape and smoking. What is it called? Um, no, it's fucking called dab and this shit. Crumble. East Coast Sour Diesel. Ooh, classic. Sativa. Let's go. Let's go, bud. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's take a look at the top five by market cap or six or whatever we feel like. Bitcoin's up 1.4% at 13.4. Ethereum's down 0.6% at 385. Tether's, of course, in third place uh, doing its thing. <laughs> Um, XRP down 1.5% at 24 cents, 0.28 after that. Bitcoin Cash down 0.6 at 266. That one's stupid. Binance Coins down 1.8 at 29.84. Chainlink is down 1.3 at 11.30. So yeah, that's been a down few days for Chainlink. Seven days is still up, but anyways, okay. And have we seen any movement? Yeah, we saw Binance Coin come up and Chainlink drop down but cash is hanging in there so let's take a look at the most movement this is less movement than we've seen actually in some of the last few days and i don't know most of these so let's go ahead nem don't know anything about it it's up four percent in the last 24 quant oh i know a little bit of i don't know much about it 2.6 up i have a positive uh, association with that but i can't remember why 2.6% on FTX token up. UMA, don't know anything about it. 2%, 2.4. And then Vite, 2.3. Know nothing about it. Nano's at 2.1. That one I'm not familiar with. Classic is up 1.8. So is Psycoin up 1.4. You know, we were seeing huge gains last week, so this is pretty tame comparatively, but I'm actually pretty interested in um, Psycoin because... I just found out this is also a storage coin like storage or file coin. Oh, look at that little jump. Hmm. Okay, I wonder if uh, file coins losses their gain. Interesting. Bitcoin on the price chart. All right. Let's take a look. In the last 12 hours, this morning we started off at 131.35. Um, had a little bit of a dip. Pretty steep rise between the hours of what's that there? between the hours of about 5.30 to 7.40. Okay. We saw over that two hour and a quarter period, we saw a 4.3% jump. That's pretty big. Um, and you saw that as a direct result of it going just under the 13. So once again, I think what you're looking at here is the miners. Um, not, this is not the miners, my bad. This would be the people looking to buy under 13. As soon as they have a chance to, they fill that order book up and they end up up over 13 again um, just trying to snap it up before it gets too high like up here uh, things chilled out a bit and have dropped cooled off a bit so where are we at here 420 we're at 134.75 so 1300 has become a position of support um, we drew a support line over here mm, when did we start this line 28th so just yesterday in the morning at 7 so we're saying that once it bounced off the 13 we saw this angle that I'm noticing here um, it's relevant all the way up to this last point and here it actually might have turned into a resistance line which can happen it can switch back and forth um, so I'm going to keep this one going for a while and consider pulling this data point out here let's just do that so that I don't lose track of the um, if I don't lose track of it, because if I leave it way back here, I feel like you'll find it. <clears throat> so we'll see how long. So that trend has been continuing for, you know, less than 24 hours, but we'll see. All right. And then this was a resistance level that we, I wanted to mark off over here. We'll see if that becomes relevant at any point in the near future or not and just stop tracking it. So, okay, that's Bitcoin's price. Let's look at the cloud. What's the cloud say? 
Let's look at a little more detailed one too. Because right now what we see is when it came to that previous support line that I had uh, noticed, it looks like that became a resistance line. Um, the cloud kind of indicates that same thing. So it's it's saying that like just the cloud itself is saying we're going to see a decrease, but let's look at a little more detail. Yeah, blue and orange are indicating the same thing, and purple's kind of indecisive. I feel like I say that every day, but um, I need to look into if there's like settings to change this cloud. I know people do. This is default, whatever comes on trading view, but I can I can look into making maybe a more cloud that works better in the five minute time frame. I like these really short time frames, so I just like to see it move. I don't like, I don't know, ADD. Okay, that's the price. So, Bitcoin transaction fees are at a 28 month high as the hash rate drops amid a price rally. So this is tough. This is a lot of craziness going on all at the same time. Um, highest since two years ago, up to 11 bucks and 573 in the past 12 days, an increase of brutal, just brutal. And let's see here. So I had to, I learned this in this article, but when you first send a transaction, it sits in the memory pool, waits for a miner to uh, put it in the blockchain. And the reason that people are having to wait so long or the fees are going up, it's the same problem. If you pay a higher fee, it's basically you're just, they're, p they're taking the highest bid to the lowest bid until they're out of room and then starting on the next block again. So if you pay a low fee, you're going to be waiting forever because people are going to keep paying to get ahead of you. So 1,800%. Hash drop. Hash rates drop. Boom, 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 boom. And then bam. This is the highest hash rate that Bitcoin's ever seen. And we dropped a significant portion of that in just a few days. <coughs> um, uh, we talked about it from another article, but everyone's saying it's because the Chinese miners are all migrating for the season. Um, okay, there's a couple of these I wanted to get to. Two stories about DeFi. It's like every day there's a new hack on DeFi, something DeFi. Um, 25 million in value has been drained by the hack, and then 35, th sorry, 350 million was taken out by investors. Um, man, oh man. So, I mean, I think DeFi is cool, and I think it has a really good future. Um, that's all well and good, but it's just, um, it's hectic. There are always hacks. There's this one right here. That's actually a hack with values lost. This one here is a hack where it's supposed to have like a, dem a democracy function built into the coin, and somebody used a significant portion of, of money that they loaned uh, to vote. Basically, they bought all the coins on credit, voted, and then sold all the coins back at basically the same value. So at s no real cost to themselves, it would appear, uh, they just bought the vote. So, yeah, I don't know. DeFi, it's cool. I'm interested in it, but I'm not putting my money in it. It's too crazy. Bank of Canada. Okay, this is a weird one. Uh, now moving beyond proof of concept stage, governor deflated expectations, saying he didn't think there's a need for a digital currency. <coughs> strong shit even so mccallum shared concerns about they're being outpaced by the country so it's like well is there a need or is there not a need you know, China, you know we've been following the chinese central bank for a while um okay oh i sh i didn't mean to jump to the canada one this is actually like the other two articles that we just closed a second ago um De DeFi, right people are saying look if people get all their ethereum tied up into secondary coins into inside the DeFi ecosystem which is kind of inside the ethereum ecosystem mostly um then they might not actually stake enough chains to make a decentralized ethereum blockchain um but when i open up these news sites and i see a hack every single day it makes me think well like wh why wouldn't i just stake on the mainnet and get what eight and a half percent and feel quite a bit more rest assured than i do about yield farms that pop up and obtain a billion dollars in value in a week i mean this just ooh. i mean i know cryptocurrency is like the cutting edge but and i guess DeFi is like the razor's edge of that but um i don't know yeah risk tolerance um i don't i 
would be surprised if ETH2 had a uh, lack of investors when the contracts go live soon. Um, this is a cool little chart I've been hovering around. Just I guess this is like if... Um, <coughs> all, I mean, because look at this. <coughs> if nobody is staking comparatively, look at the rewards, you know? So I just feel like that, like this thing is showing you that Ethereum's going to live somewhere in this little area, you know, and every time someone's like, yield farms, and everyone gets out of ETH, well, it's going to go up here. And then everyone's like, oh, fuck, man, ETH is better than the yield farms. We're right back down. That's that's my thinking on that. Um, yeah, this is the same. Ah, uh, man, I was all mixed up. I didn't coordinate my articles at all. This is going back to the Bitcoin one. Um the only thing I wanted to look at on this one is, however, some relief might come next week. What relief? Like, I don't really understand, like, what's happening. And, and I don't know much about Bitcoin. And maybe that I think the difficulties adjust early next week. So I was like, okay, I don't – will be mine more frequently. So I don't know if that just means the block time will shorten. I don't know if that changes once per week based on some kind of algorithm. Uh, <clears throat> I was curious. <clears throat> so I asked my buddies, and let's see if they replied, actually. Uh Let's see if anyone... Oh, people might have replied. Let's see what people said. Well, I guess there's that. <laughs> Difficulty will adjust down. I'll, t I'll ask that dude in a second. A little bit more clarifying, because I'm not 100% sure. I kind of assumed that, but I, I don't know. Like, I was going to ask him some questions. We'll see. Justin Sun allow announced that he is going to copy chain link. I don't know about Justin Sun, man. I'm not exactly... Exci is it dead? It's not dead. I'm saying I'm not putting my money in it, but like, if people are calling it dead, they're crazy. Uh, people are piling their money into these things as fast as people can hack it. Um, yeah, uh, this will keep short. Tron is like a private version of Ethereum. It's like a corporate <clears throat> knockoff of Ethereum. So now he's like, ah, Chainlink is pretty dope. Let's just make another knockoff of that, too. Um, <clears throat> I don't see it as even a surprise really but um yeah okay well that's it i uh i'm not a huge fan of ripoffs or corporate centralized garbage so you know <laughs> fuck sean hey bud okay let's suck a bitcoin on the way out of here nah still under the red all right have a good one guys hey that's a book that's right bud